liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis. Weightlessness comes on really quickly during a space launch, or rather, should I say, as soon as a space launch stops. The rocket is accelerating. You might go up to about one and a half G and then back down to about half a G. Then you might go up to two and a half G for a bit. And then it drops back down again as the stage is jettisoned. And then you'll go up to three and a half G on Soyuz and you maximize at three and a half G. And then suddenly, bang, the final rocket stage is gone. You go instantly from hyper G to zero G. And all of a sudden you weigh nothing. And so that is an incredibly powerful feeling you get. The fluid immediately starts to redistribute and move towards your chest and head. No longer was I being pushed back into my seat, no longer was I even sitting down, but I was very much aware that I was floating somewhere between the straps that were still tying me to my seat, and I forgot what it feels like to actually sit down. We are aware of the vulnerability of our crew. We know the chance of losing our life is about one of a hundred. We feel we master what we are doing, we master our spaceship, which has evolved in our mind as just an extension of our own body. Any time there is a problem, our first idea is where is the solution? And when we get close to launch, we are Superman as a crew. They can invent the scenario they want, very complex, we survive, we, we succeed. Weightlessness is 75% fantastic and 25% a pain in the butt. And the 25% has to do with keeping your stuff where you want it. And so here's an example. Eating dinner. You end up eating everything sequentially. So you open up your pack of steak tips and you cut it open and you eat the whole thing. And then you wrap it up and you put it in the garbage can. And then you go get your package of uh, green beans and you open that up and you eat the whole thing because it's just a hassle to have to put, put it down, secure it, go to the next thing, pull it up, and that just becomes a lot of overhead. You have to think about it all the time. Sipping in space is not easy the first time or the first day of any mission because you are excited and you think about what you're going to do and it's hard to let the brain relax and not think about the extraordinary adventure you are living. But it's funny because when you fall asleep during that transition, you close your eyes and you have this sensation of floating, which is strange. Uh, you don't feel your body pressing on a mattress like at home. It's strange, where is my mattress, you know? And just for the fun, I, I used to sleep on the ceiling facing down. Anything that is specific to space that you cannot do on Earth, I wanted to do it, like uh, sleeping on the ceiling, uh, to do pee upside down, uh, watching the earth uh, leaning on the cockpit uh, top uh, windows, uh, those kind of things. It's quite tricky to actually make yourself stay in a particular place in the space station because as soon as you touch one of the walls in order to try and make yourself move in that particular part you just carry on moving until you touch another wall so you have to try and hold perhaps two ropes on either side and let go simultaneously and if you're lucky you will let go with the same force so um, you do tend to move through the module as well as twisting round but it's a lovely sense of freedom. Being out in the uh, spacewalk, out in the spacesuit, is like being in space on steroids because everything that makes space wonderful, zero gravity, uh, being able to float, being able to move big things, and that incredible view of the Earth, all that is magnified. When you get outside, you're not looking out the rim of a window. You are out there. The thrill, the rush, if you will, of opening that door the first time and there's a bit of a sensation that you're going to fall to Earth, that you're leaving this platform that is, of course, as weightless as you are anyway, but you don't think about that. You think you're on a stable platform and you're leaving that. It's like literally stepping out of an airplane and you think you're going to fall, but of course you don't. There is space and Earth and space station wherever you look because of the bubble helmet that we wear. Every spacewalk is different and you know that they don't take spacewalks lightly when you're asked to go outside to do something. A lot of thought has been going into, is it worth that risk? And so as the astronauts that are outside doing the spacewalk, we are 
uh, keenly aware of how important our tasks are. And so most of us uh, are so focused on those tasks, it's hard to stop and appreciate what a cool experience that we're being given. Believe it or not, I think astronauts are more afraid of, of screwing up than blowing up. Uh, and so our biggest stresses and tensions and fears really come with that. The scariest things we do are things that we train the most for, so that makes us more task focused. Having said that, if you don't have a little bit of flutter when you're doing some of these things, you probably don't realize quite where you are. It only surprises me now when I think about life back in space, how easy it was, because when you're there, you just do it. You don't have to think about it, and, um, and it's just a joy the whole time. You know, I have a large family and we're very close, but six and a half months in my first space flight, I didn't want to come home. It's so amazing up there. You're discovering new things, you're seeing your planet, you're floating, you're like Superman. It's kind of addictive in a way. So you get past that and you're always glad to be home and, and see your family. But I remember thinking, as great as it is to be home, boy, part of me wishes I was still up there. When you see your planet that way, and, and it's some total from space, you know, all those senses uh, kind of get overwhelmed. 